to you. I missed you. Missed these warnings. I've taken notes for the last few weeks as this body has journeyed through Italy and Greece and Montenegro. But the most significant stop was in Philadelphia. I believe I mentioned a teacher named Bawa Muyadin just before I went on my mini hiatus. I was able to visit his camp, his base here in the United States. He died in 1986. He was from Sri Lanka. And I had learned a little bit about him before I was called to that mosque. I've never been to a mosque before. That was a first. I was called to his room, his bedroom, where he transitioned. I got to sit there. I got to read through his books. I was gifted one of his books. I was introduced to his main practice. Guess what it was? It was a mantra-based practice in Sufism. He was Sufi-like Rumi. They call it Dikr reciting a prayer over and over again for the purposes of remembering God. Of course, in Sufism and Islam, this mystic Islam, they call God Allah. If you remember, I've talked about before that Jesus called God Allah, ha, Allah ha, or Allah. Ha. And so I want you to put both hands over your heart. And I want you to feel the love that's here. Feel the good news that's here. If you're having a hard time connecting with the feeling, see your grandmother's face there, see your child's face there, see your pet's face, and then feel the love that's there and then drop all images. Just be with the love. Love the love. And tell it other than you there is nothing. Only you are God. Say it again. Other than you, and when you say you, feel that love strongly, clearly. Other than you, there is nothing. Only you are God. Emphasis on that you with a capital Y. That feeling that's always here, but you're too busy to fill it. You're too worried to fill it. You're too tight too anxious to experience it. You can't think your way into this. You have to experience your way into this. Other than you, there is nothing. You are God. But Bawa didn't speak it in those words. He spoke it in Arabic. La ilaha il Allah. I'll put it in the show notes. He said at the time of creation, God said only these words. Even now, this is what God says. This is very good for many different things. This path existed before and exists now, but we have given it up and instead hold on to new methods. This path appeared at the time of Adam, and it continues the same today. But man has forsaken this path. The more man discovers about the world, the more he forsakes the truth. That is what has happened. He has forsaken it and made himself subject to sorrow. But this is the way it was before. And this is the way it is now. If man can once again hold on to what he has forsaken, he will have peace and tranquility. This will give him everything. It will give him wealth. It will cure the 4,448 diseases of the nerves and the 84 kinds of diseases caused by the air. It will cure the diseases of karma, the diseases of illusion, and the diseases of arrogance. He goes on for a long time. I'll drop some of it in the show notes. He says, knowing this, being this state, knowing only love is here. And if you have forgotten, if you've been listening more to me and to that silent love, put your hands back over your heart and tell it other than you, there is nothing. You are God. Keep repeating that while you hear me and see how possible it is. You're usually thinking other things while you're listening to me. Think that thought, the only thought. That matters and feel what that thought is pointing to. The only feeling that matters, the feeling that's beyond feelings. This love that's appearing is everything. He says, when you continue to meditate in this way, your state will display youthful qualities of beauty, of light, and color. 
In this state, you will receive whatever you need. You will receive true wealth and you will have peace. It's something that will give you everything. Illness, poverty, difficulty, danger, and accidents. All this will be removed. La ilaha il Allah. Or simply, other than you, God, there is nothing. You are God other than God. Nothing exists. Only God exists. Only love is here. Any of these. The words aren't some magic formula. It's not a spell. That's what they remind you of. It's what they bring you to. It's where they leave you. For there is no you, no one to be healed, no one to fix. I know you're battle weary. I am you. I know you're tired. But I promise you, you are on the other side. You are in the light. It doesn't get darker in this direction that you're going in now. Life has been aligning all along. And today, everything changes. Today, you know what matters. C.S. Lewis said, human history is the long, terrible story of man trying to find something other than God, which will make him happy. But not you. You've put away childish things. It hurt. To put away some of them. You've grieved. You're being the one thing appearing as everything, but it's not a thing. You can call it God. You can call it awareness. You can call it love. You can call it you, capital Y. A businessman once came to Sri Sri Ravi Shankar wanting to see this you, to see this God. And Ravi Shankar told him in 30 seconds, I can show you God, but you have to do what I say. Are you ready? You have to smash all the faces, including yours in the world. Drop all the faces. Think nobody has any face. It is the face that creates cravings and aversions. But the moment you smash all the faces, see everybody as a silhouette, what is left? Only energy. It's like seeing bulbs. Switching your attention from bulbs to electricity. Bulbs are there, but you put your attention on the electricity. When the world is appearing in front of you, when the childish things are there, God can never appear. Unless you smash the world, God will not appear to you. This is the real letting go of the world. Renouncing the world is not running away from the world, but simply not recognizing the world. A shifting the mind from the world. And so it's like sleep. Finding God is like deep sleep. When you're in it, there's no world there, right? When God is there, there's no world. But when the world is there, there's no God. And that's why we say, La ilaha illallah. I saw a story in Miracle of Love by Ramdas, and then I'll let you go. This has gone on for far too long <laughs> this morning. I missed you. And it's the beginning of season three. So I am allotting myself a little bit more time. I hope you have it to share with me. And so last story, I flip open that book. That's how I read it, not cover to cover. I just flip it open so that I can get like a word of the day. I don't do it every day, but you know, whenever it catches my eye. And so I flipped open to a page that, well, I'll just read it to you. It says a Muslim devotee invited Maharaji to attend a religious festival at his home. The whole family and many of their friends gathered together to sing Sufi songs and to hear readings from the Quran. Many Muslim mullahs, priests, and scholars attended the festival to perform the rituals and read the scriptures. When Maharaji arrived, the devotee escorted him to the place of honor in front of the scholars. They immediately ceased their singing and complained to the host. They said they couldn't continue the rituals in the presence of a Hindu. Maharaji verbally abused them for their prejudice and narrow-mindedness. He quoted from the Quran and from some great Sufi poet saints on the oneness of all religions. Maharaji asked for some prasad, which is blessed food. When it was brought, he distributed food, sweets, and money to the scholars. Happy again, they started their chanting. 
and Maharaji accompanied them for many hours singing, La ilaha illa la, la ilaha illa la. I've had this book, not this particular copy, but versions of this book for years. And I'd never seen this story. I'd never seen that mantra, this prayer. Preceding this story, there's the quote that I had seen, that all religions are the same. They all lead to God. God is everybody. The same blood flows through us all, the arms, the legs, the heart. All are the same. See no difference. You can't realize God if you see differences. Learn to find the love within. Feel the love within that body there. And notice that you're feeling it everywhere. You are the everywhere soul, the everywhere spirit. Other than you, there is nothing. You are God, and I love you, and we'll chat soon. If this episode helped you feel good, helped you feel God, then leave a review on Apple Podcasts and screenshot it and send it to me for a free gift and follow me on Patreon so I can see you, so I can see your smile.